Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on the CPL Portfolio Cycle Explained. Today's presentation is going to provide um, ECEs with an overview of the mandate of the College of Early Childhood Educators. Um, and then we're going to go through the CPL portfolio cycle, um, offering some of the descriptions of the CPL uh, portfolio components and resources, and then some contact information about where you can reach us. But before we begin, I'm just going to introduce myself. My, my name is Meredith Farley. I'm a registered early childhood educator and a professional practice analyst at the College of ECE. And I work alongside Deb. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Deb Gores. I'm also a registered early childhood educator and also a professional practice analyst like Meredith at the college. So this slide demonstrates the college's mandate, um, the mandate being to serve and protect in the public interest, the public having an interest in keeping children safe. Um, we do that through a number of different mechanisms. There are registration requirements for all members that they need to have before they can become a registered member of the, the profession. Um, once you are registered with the college, your name is visible on the public register, which is a place where any member of the public or employers can verify um, your credentials and whether or not you're a member in good standing. That transparency demonstrates trust and builds trust in the public that um, um, an ECE in good standing with the college is adhering to the code of ethics and standards of practice, as well as engaging in continuing competence, which is why we're here today. We're going to talk about the continuing, um, the continuous professional learning program. And then finally, we have a professional regulation department, which handles any complaints. If the complaint is warranted, then it might go through a discipline uh, process. So that is a really high level overview of our, our mandate. More information is available in greater detail on our website. Awesome, thanks Meredith. So this slide, we just wanted to highlight where engaging in continuous professional learning um, fits into being a regulated professional. So on the slide here, there's many different aspects shown around what being a regulated professional means. Um, some examples having protected titles, so that's RECE or ECE, having public trust, like Meredith talked about on the previous slide. Being a regulated professional involves decision-making, using your professional judgment, um, engaging in ethical decision-making, um, and it also involves engaging in continuous professional learning, where that green piece of the, the pie there is on the slide. And it is, a, it is a part of being a regulated professional, because like Meredith mentioned on the previous slide, it is part of our legislation. We have the Continuous Professional Learning Regulation that was added into the ECE Act. And so that's when the college was required to develop a continuous professional learning program. And one piece of the Continuous Professional Learning Program is the CPL portfolio cycle, which we'll be getting into shortly. So why did we revise the Continuous Professional Learning Program? So if you, you're not aware, we did revise the CPL program in July of last year. And that was because of a number of factors that are highlighted here on the slide. So the first one was that we were mandated, um, there was to incorporate government mandated sexual abuse prevention program that was added into the legislation back in December. Um, so that was one of the reasons we had to update the continuous professional learning program. We also heard feedback from members and stakeholders um, that was highlighting the complexity of the continuous professional learning program and the need to reduce that complexity. And so we took um, that feedback into consideration with this revised program and also, of course, the impact of the pandemic on the sector, which had a great impact. And so by uh, reducing the complexity of the CPL program, um, we hope that it could help support some of those impacts. Great, so this is a high level overview of the program. Um, 
um, in its completed form, essentially. And you're listening to this webinar because you're ready to start the CPL portfolio cycle. And so you, this is an information session to give you an idea of what the changes are and what you're needing to do. So what that means is you've completed the educational components, which are elements of CPL. Um, the educational components are the expectations for practice module, um, as well as the program that Deb outlined on the former slide, the sexual abuse prevention program has been completed and you're ready to start the new and revised portfolio cycle. And it's exciting because we've simplified the program um, and so far the feedback has been really great. Um, it continues to be grounded in self-reflection and self-directed learning and it's underpinned by an understanding of the code of ethics and standards of practice as well, um, but it's through a one year portfolio cycle um, and you're required to complete at least one goal. Awesome. So here we just describe the CPL portfolio cycle a bit more in detail. Like Meredith said, it's an annual cycle now. So every year you're refreshing your CPL portfolio. Um, it still requires you to reflect on your practice. So the components will support that reflection and we'll get into details around uh, the, comp the components shortly. Um, the CPL portfolio cycle requires you to develop one professional learning goal for yourself to focus on for the year. Um, it will um, allow you to plan and engage in activities or learning experiences, and it will also have a space for you to document your professional learning as you engage in it throughout the year. That's right. <clears throat> so the CPL portfolio, uh, sorry, we'll re-record that one. Deb, it's yours. Okay. And so this slide highlights what the um, two required components are of the revised CPL portfolio cycle. So the first component is the reflection and planning tool. And the second component is the record of professional learning. That's right. So um, on the slide now is a snapshot of what's found inside of the handbook. Um, it's the reflection and planning tool, which really is the beginning of the process. Um, you complete it at the beginning of every new portfolio cycle, and then it's updated as needed. Um, it's a three-part process that's going to facilitate self-reflection, a review of your code of ethics and standards of practice. It's going to support you in developing one professional learning goal, and um, it's going to help you in identifying the learning activities or experiences that you've selected to complete that goal. And then the record of professional learning. Um, so this is the next part um, and included in this record is gonna be brief descriptions of the activities or the experiences that you engaged in with dates that you completed them. Um, you're gonna provide documentation that demonstrates your engagement with the professional learning, um, a brief description of the next steps um, and a final reflection about your learning um, through this experience or activity. So there's two sections. Section A is completed throughout the cycle, so throughout the year. And then section B is completed as you're wrapping up your cycle at the end. So on this slide, we're, gonna, we're just highlighting some tips for you as you begin completing your continuous professional learning portfolio. So when you are completing sections A and B of the reflection and planning tool, some things you might wanna consider are past learnings, for example. So what did you do last year for your continuous professional learning? That can help you to um, think of ideas that you might want to engage in for this year. Maybe you wanna continue on with a, with a topic that you were looking into last year. And share ideas with your colleagues or other RECEs in your learning community. It's great to share your goals with one another, share your, your learning interests, the activities you're engaging in, et cetera. There's also a number of different college resources that are available on the website to support you in completing your portfolio. So there's resources on goal development, topic ideas, portfolio process snapshots, and examples of uh, fully filled out CPL portfolios if you wanted to take a look at those. And then we also have resources uh, that are more practice related resources that could act, you could actually use as learning activities for your portfolio if your goal relates to them. So we have practice guidelines, practice notes, 
scenarios and reflection guides as well. And those can all be found on our website and they're free and uh, you can download them. And then also um, we did wanna mention that in the reflection and planning tool and the record of professional learning, there are prompts that are there. Um, and those are really to help support you to, de to deepen your reflections. Um, the prompts are found in the pink or blue shaded call out boxes. And you don't need to answer all the prompts. Those are really just there, um, like I said, to help deepen your reflections if you wanted to, to go a little bit deeper um, with, with your reflections with those questions, but you don't have to answer them all. So here is um, examples of CPL activities. So this diagram can be found in the handbook. It can also be found on the website. And it's really just an example of the breadth of different um, kinds of learning activities that you can engage in for your for your portfolio. So some of the examples here are, you know, listening to podcasts or walking, watching documentaries. Maybe you want to join a community of practice. Maybe you want to um, engage in a collaborative discussion with your colleagues or use a reflective journaling technique to, to keep track of you know, a new activity or something that you were engaging in. Um, and so these are of course not the only activities, but they're just, they're just examples to, to help you if you um, wanted to get more ideas of learning activities for yourself. Great, um, and so how you will document the activities is gonna vary depending on the activity that you've chosen, really. So documentation um, is generally seen as being um, demonstrated through the obtainment of a certificate, which isn't the only thing that can demonstrate you've been engaging in learning. So yes, certificates are valid, but they're definitely not the only thing that you can use, create, to demonstrate that you've been engaging in your professional learning. So this slide demonstrates some of the things that you can use, reflections, agendas, um, um, copies of documents that you've supported drafting or revising, um, notes about a podcast or an article that you had um, watched or read. Um, so definitely take a look at this slide because it gives you a really creative idea about ways that you can demonstrate you've been engaging in your learning throughout the, throughout the year. Okay, so now Deb and I are going to walk you through a couple of examples of some goals that have some learning activities and experiences and documentation attached to them. Um, so in the first example, an ECE has created a goal um, around the topic of interest, um, family engagement. And this ECE wants to support placement students with family engagement and communication. And to achieve this goal, um, the ECE has decided to use the pause and reflect on communication with families, which is located in our practice guideline communication and collaboration available on our website. Um, they're using that as an activity to with their placement student um, at one of their check ins. So how they would document this learning is through notes from the check-in with the placement student, as well as their feedback about supporting them, how it went, things that they learned in relation to family engagement and communication. Awesome. And the second example that we have here, again, same topic of interest of family engagement. This RECE uh, wrote their goal as updating my workplace policies to have a greater focus on engagement and communication with families using technology. And so one of the learning experiences that they're engaging in is to conduct a survey with families on communication and technological preferences and the way that they've chosen to uh, document their, their activity and their learning is they saved feedback from families to so all the feedback um, that they got through the surveys. And then they shared a summary of that um, in one of, the, one of the newsletters. So they were sharing it back with the families. So this is a high level overview of the CPL portfolio handbook and the components. Um, and some of the details that you're going to need to watch for. So watch for your email. Make sure that you're checking your email for col uh, college emails um, because there you can request if you'd like to have a hard copy of the CPL handbook. 
Um, you can also download it on our website for free and you can have it as a Word document or a PDF and save it to your computer if you'd like to work that way. But if you do want a hard copy, you'd need to, re to respond to the link to request that be mailed to you. Um, how do you maintain your CPL portfolio? Well, that's up to you. As long as you're doing it and recording it and keeping it and saving it in a way that is um, housed on your computer or in your closet, that's totally your choice, um, as long as it's a way that's working for you. Keep your um, completed portfolio um, components for two membership years in case of auditing. Awesome. And here we're just really hiding, highlighting, sorry, some CPL resources. We have a picture of the handbook there. That's what Meredith was just talking about on the previous slide. You can find it on the website um, as well as request a hard copy if you would like. In the middle there is a snapshot of the CPL portfolio examples. So those are the fully filled out uh, CPL portfolios. So there's three of them on the website if you wanted to take a look at those. And then we have another supporting resource there, which just highlights some topics that you could um, focus in on for your CPL. And if you did want more resources, uh, we have all of the resources housed on our website for both CPL and the practice resources as well. And you can just go to those uh, websites there at the bottom of the slide. And here we just wanted to share our email, which is cpl at college-ece.ca. If you do have any questions at all about the portfolio cycle or the CPL program in general, uh, please do reach out to that email and we will respond to you. Great. Thanks for tuning in. Thank Bye, you so everyone. much. Bye.